Okay, welcome to the final part, which is part four of this tutorial in for loops. And we're starting from this file that we made up, building from part one through part three. And what we're going to do is I'm going to say control E to go to the other side. We have a loop within a loop structure. And just to, just to show you what we have is we have a sine wave sampled at some frequency. So change the number of samples, for example. And then it does it does that, generates the sine wave, in this case ten times. We can do it a hundred times if we want. And then it puts random noise there and it collects all that data here. And now what we're going to do is calculate the average of all of these data given this noise that we insert into the signal. And I put this hundred millisecond delay in there just so we can see what's happening. I'm going to delete that because it will make things too slow for now. So, okay, how do we average all of these values? We want to average, think of this as a, a spreadsheet of data where, where each column represents one sine wave which is with its own unique noise pattern based on this random level we choose here. So we want to average across those columns basically average row-wise. So I'm going to have another for loop. I'm going to show you a trick where before I said you had to wire this this N terminal here to tell us how many, how many iterations we're going to run the loop. But we can also do that implicitly. For example, we know there are we know there are 10 columns of sine wave data because we've run that this loop, this outside loop, 10 times. There has to be 10 columns in this. So if we hook this up to the second for loop, then the for loop, unless, unless we wire this other, unless if we leave this end blank, then LabVIEW is going to assume that it's going to iterate this loop 10 times. So that's kind of in, implicit. Now that's bad practice if you're, if you're wiring multiple things into this, this for loop because then LabVIEW will get confused about indexing. For example, if we did that. So when you do that, there's other things to do, but I won't tell you about that now. For now, we'll just use implicit indexing. Okay, so we want to average these, these, these data, but we want to do it row by row. So we have to transpose the data. So we go into programming, array, transpose 2D array, and attach this this way. And then use our implicit indexing. If we right click and disable the indexing, this wouldn't work. So we have to leave index on, indexing on. Oops. Okay, now go back to programming. Actually, go to mathematics and find in probability and statistics um, S, SD or standard deviation and variance. You can do mean or whatever you want. And then, so for each of these, it's going to take these are just values and basically this this orange wire here now represents for a slice of time it represents these ten values across the slice of time if we didn't use this transpose it would average the whole it would, it would average the whole sine wave and you get you get an average of zero so you have to transpose it. Okay, so now we use indexing to collect the mean data af afterwards. And now we can make a graph of that mean data. So there's our mean data, which is smoother than any one of our our given trials. You can change the noise level to something big. 
and it still smooths, smooths everything out. And now, just to make it a little bit neat or cleaner to look at, we can just add our mean data trace to all of the all of the data combined. So all we do is use a build array, so programming array, build array, and then take this mean data, and we're going to expand this out, add another element. So I'm going to take all of our data here, connect it up, and then connect up this one more column. So we still have a 2D array, but we just added one more column of data to it. And then I'm going to disconnect this waveform graph here and just put it over here. So we have all of our raw data with all the noise combined with the average data. And so this faint white line in the middle is the average data. And to make that come out more clearly, you can just go up to this plot, legend, say color, maybe I'll choose blue, like light blue or something. And then I'll go again, click, the, click on it and say maybe line width, make it thick. Now you can see that average data is really tracking the middle of that, of that noise. So make the noise quite big. I'll make it one. And I'll do, I'm going to increase our sampling rate to 50 for a sine wave. And I'll do 100 loop iterations. So now you can see it really clearly. So hopefully this, this gives you an idea how to, of how to use uh, for loops and shift registers and maybe some other tricks as well.